Yo, what is up, YouTube? Mr. Break over here, content creator 101. And guess what? Today, I did a video a long time ago. A long, long time ago, a few years back. I did some software. I did some benchmarking. But I didn't do it correctly, though, and I understand that. It wasn't the greatest. It was okay. It was so-so. However, though, I want to change that. I really, really want to change that. And I really do want to give the final answer to which streaming software is the best. Is it XSplit to where you have to pay? Or crowdsource OBS. Free. No cent. Unless you want to donate, of course. But truly, is there a price to pay for the best streaming software? Or is this all a gimmick? I'm putting that to the test, and I'm going to give you the true answer. All right? Yeah. I'm going to do that, okay? Just for you. Just for you, the viewer, yourself, you, okay? I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to do all the hard work. We're going to benchmark and do the best we can. And I really do hope you're going to like this video. Please do. <laughs> Please. This was an expensive video. This was, this was not cheap, okay? Please help me buy my merch. Subscribe, like the video, please. Okay, this was not cheap. This was expensive. Please, okay? Yeah, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, and welcome back to Building Tips with me, Mr. Breaky, of course. So right here, we're doing a time lapse. It took a long time but we got it working, it's up and running. Yay, so I'm really excited and happy. But however, the, I just wanna give some tips out for anyone and everyone that wants to start this. So for me, in this case, you always wanna check your wires, make sure nothing's damaged, nothing's cut. But of course, if you're starting off brand new, just make sure you have the correct wires, everything's connected through, and all that fun stuff. So for my case, as you can see, the wire for the CPU to the motherboard was kind of like in the front end and for some reason at the pretty much when I did it beforehand, it wasn't connecting, it wasn't like going through from the back side. I don't know if I was just like not thinking straight or just something wasn't like pushing through, but I did went ahead, got that fixed. So 100% it's back up and running. I put it in the back side, connected, everything powers up. So 100% yay. Another pro tip that I recommend is actually getting a microfiber cloth. Now, for me, I don't have this, so I definitely need to buy one, but I recommend those. That way you don't get anything tangled or anything, like I guess, like caught with a, just a regular cloth of the towel. And on top of that, you do want to make sure at the bare minimum, 90% or above of rubbing alcohol. Reason for that is because when you get rubbing alcohol, it does leave a residue if it's below 90%. And that's not what you want to do for your electronics. You want to make sure that it doesn't have that residue of the rubbing alcohol. Want to make sure it's damped, not very wet on everything, mixing in with a little bit of water, mixing in with the 90% or 99%, whatever amount you have, but make sure it's at the bare minimum, 90% or above rubbing alcohol. Also, what I can recommend is for another pro tip is to make sure you have pretty much like magnetic tools, aka screwdrivers, just to make sure that they can actually connect and latch onto screwdrivers, okay? So, you know, not that omega powerful, but of course, it's something that can just help with screwdrivers and screws don't get lost don't get damaged or anything like that don't drop onto the motherboard or in the case so you know this is a good way to just manage and just make everything clean and easy to install now this one i 100 percent guarantee to get a data vac blower or you can do a vacuum but do keep in mind just want to be careful for either one that if you get a blower or vacuum that you do have small parts on the motherboard screwdrivers might come loose so just want to double check on that just make sure you know not doing massive force for it and all that thing but also at the same time just want to make sure everything's clean stay away from the cam blowers i mean they're not bad or anything they're awesome they're great is is that they're somewhat of like a one-time use or maybe like a few time use but that's about it and you're gonna go out buy another one that's another five dollars ten dollars however much you're spending you might as well just go get a blower It'll be a lot better, a lot easier. And so I just highly recommend getting it from Amazon or for, you know, any, maybe my Home Depot or something. I'm not sure. 
but just check your local store, check Amazon, and you'll get those great deals and all. I highly recommend it. And on top of that, you also do want to check and make sure your fans are good. Everything's clean, everything's got it out, and you just make sure everything's connected again. So whatever you take out, make sure you do put it back in, plugged in. Wires, fans, towers, anything, everything, GPUs, just make sure everything's connected through, everything's working, everything's great. And other than that though, you're gonna have an awesome, great time. And once all that's done, pretty much we're gonna go ahead and move over to the M.2 install, which was hopefully, it was a little bit pain in the butt, but it was very easy and simple. All you really have to do is once you connect it through, you'll hear a soft click. That means that it's connected to the slot itself. And also you do want to make sure you also check your motherboard's manual, make sure everything's connected, make sure it's in the proper slot or port and all that fun stuff. So just make sure everything's good to go. Not all motherboards are the same. So you do have to check on that. Okay, awesome. And those are kind of really it for tips. Just make sure you have the right tools, everything's simple, clean, and just make sure, you know, like on my side, I was on a carpet. So I kind of every once in a while touch like the case of the metal or something, you know, just kind of just make sure you kind of discharge yourself just to make sure nothing gets like electrocuted or anything like that, like any spark or, you know, any shock to the motherboard. So just want to make sure everything's good. Okay, awesome. And we're going to go ahead and go into the numbers. So right now we just got a confirmation that we did went ahead and got confirmed for the M.2 slot. So it did work. Awesome. Everything works, everything's connected. So now what we wanna do is, so we're in, it's at X2, which we need to go ahead and go into events and go to onboard device configuration and then drop down to two over two, which is the one that's on. And then go ahead and switch it over to X4. And that's all we need to do. And of course I got mentioned before, do double check with your motherboard because some cases, some ports of the device itself, of the motorboard, do get turned off, and so just a heads up for that. So we wanna go ahead, just make sure everything's enabled, everything's good to go, awesome. And then we're gonna go ahead and exit out. Uh, but we do wanna save though, so we need to go ahead and go up, save changes, and then reset. Yes. All right, welcome back everyone. Hopefully you had a lovely time with the time lapse. Um, it was a little bit fast. It took a very long time. It just, it was all good. So I just made it into a time lapse. This is me just cleaning out and just getting everything installed, redone, redo, and all that fun stuff. So yeah, so it was awesome, but it, it took a long time. Now, like I mentioned before, we're gonna look into the numbers, but however though, I wanna do a quick test of the loading for OBS and XSplit. And the results might surprise you. Take a look. So right off the gate, right off the gate, OBS is way faster than XSplit. And it's just mind blowing of just crazy shenanigans of how long it takes. Granted though, at the beginning, Expo did ask for a login, so I had to log in, make sure everything's good to go, restarted the computer, brought it back up again, and then did it from there. And of course, still amazing results. OBS completely opened up instant, and Expo took a, a few seconds, not very long, but as you can see from the results, it does take a little bit of time to get it open. So now, we're gonna go ahead, go into the numbers. So I just wanna keep a note five minute testing on average of both the CPU and GPU usage and all. And also I have actually two graphs from the Twitch inspector, part of my way of testing and benchmarking streaming. And so that's actually some crazy information to see. So go ahead, check out the numbers and we're gonna talk more after the video.
have it. You have the results. You have the video footage. I don't know what to tell you. It is mind-blowing that OBS is a little bit pretty much powerful than Exploit. Usage-wise on everything that pretty much OBS is actually your top number one to actually use. However, though, I just want to keep a note, though, as, like, with usage-wise on everything, it's not, like, omega difference and on everything. There, there's a slight percentage-wise. There, there's a little bit of a gap, but not something severe. So, either one you use, just keep in mind of what you're using. So, if you are going to be a one PC streaming on, like myself, then OBS will probably be the best thing. Do keep in mind though, and I have issues with this, um, many times my friends have issues with this where OBS for some reason won't pick up the game. Just kind of, you're just going to have to fiddle around with it for a little bit. So, just want to put a little note for that. To me, OBS Studio is kind of like a fiddle around with it and you'll be good to go. You're golden on everything. So like, it's not, not bad. It's awesome. It's great. I love it. Same thing with Xplit. To me, Xplit is kind of like a plug and play type of thing to where it does take a moment. It does take a moment to load. It takes some time to set up everything. But once it gets going, it's going. Like, once you have everything set up and done, close it out, reopen it, boom. Like, you're ready to go. You're ready to stream. While with OBS, it does take just a little bit of time to just make sure everything's loaded through game-wise. Make sure everything's captured. Then you can go. So, it's just very minor stuff. Not like a minute, not two minutes or anything like that. It's just little seconds. You know, just microseconds, okay? So, I just want to put my note for that. So, pretty much in conclusion, I'm not sure how I mentioned this back in from the old videos that I did before, but it doesn't really matter. It honestly doesn't. Whatever software you use, it's fine, okay? I highly recommend to stick with XSplit or OBS Studio. Do not do any of those other like Streamlabs OBS or Stream Elements OBS. I don't recommend it. It's not the great, it, this, bleh, you know. Even with Studio, Twitch Studio, it's not the greatest. I've done it before, which by the way, comment down below if you want to see that information. Other than that though, it's not worth it. Stick with OBS Studio and Xsplit and just, you know, just have fun. Have fun streaming, okay? Don't, don't have to worry about the technical stuff and all that thing, unless you run into some issues, of course. But that's how I'm here to help. And I'm here to give you the final answer. Is OBS the best or is XSplit the best? And truthfully, honestly, the truthful answer, in slight, OBS is the best, technical wise. However though, it really doesn't matter. Those little percentages don't do much and on everything. It just depends on the game you play, even how big, because I was actually running at 1080p, 60 frames, at the six bit maximum of internet usage for Twitch. And both ran fine. Didn't drop frames or anything. And I was just streaming. Everything worked great and normal and awesome. So honestly, it's up to you. You pick whatever software you have. If you're tight on a budget and on everything, OBS Studio is awesome. If you have money, wanna give it a shot, XSplit is once again an awesome program. Okay? It's really up to you. I'm Mr. Bricky. You have a great one, great time, and I'll see y'all around. Bye-bye.